emotions in our hearts Shed water's in our bars The spirit and the flesh The emotions that arrest The cerebral will contest Propelling the unrest Creatures and bandits With means on the hand The teachers pedantic And lack understanding So sweep out the sand With the broom in your hand Stand up Make we bone Babylon Guess I can give the world to you The world to you But the falling of the curtain Is for certain Be careful where you lurking Demons searching The spirit and the whim of the battle within Cause I can give the world to ya The world to ya But the falling of the curtain is for certain Be careful where you're lurking Demon searching The spirit and the whim of the battle within Of a blaze with gratitude and rage, we touch another page with delirious delight, impervious to light. This vitality and might encourages the flight. Creatures and bandits with means on the hand, and the teachers pedantic and lack understanding. So sweep out the sand with the broom in your hand. Stand up, make we born Babylon. Guess I can give the world to you, the world to you, but the falling of the curtain is for certain. Be careful where you're lurking, demon searching. The spirit and the whim of fight the battle within Cause I can give the world to you, the world to you But the falling of the curtain is for certain Be careful where you're lurking, demons searching The spirit and the whim of fight the battle within But the falling of the curtain is for certain Be careful where you lurking, demon searching The spirit and the whim of fight the battle within Cause I can give the world to you, the world to you But the falling of the curtain is for certain Be careful where you lurking, demon searching The spirit and the whim of fight the battle within Marching then retreating to live to march on all that the resources are depleting Guess it's just the price we pay, emotions they are fleeting And lead many a man astray, tormented by the sword And the vagaries of war The children of brethren cut down to the floor the Tyrants go freely born, and the masses will applaud All treaties and systems and kinships will fall Wait for me, by the green hill, my brother builds shelter. Make sure there's room for another. Show me what is mine unto you, I will offer. But diligently guarding a citadel and cover. Wait for me, by the green hill, my sister out there. You'll be safe from the blizzard and the blister. The marching will be hard, the mountains will shiver. So wait at the green hill. Down by the river Everlasting burn The everlasting light With passion and with verb We shall tempt the edge of fate tonight Cannons are blasting Hearts are filled with fire and fright Weapons are massing We're building them at higher heights From depth of the sea To the soaring of the peaks The 
children of brethren can't find their release For vengeance or for peace because the sorrow and the grief The wind by the green hill will bring some relief Wait for me by the green hill my brother build shelter Make sure there's room for another For surely what is mine to you I will offer But diligently God in a citadel and cover Wait for me by the green hill my sister out there you be safe from the blizzard and the blister The marching will be hard and the mountains will shiver So wait at the green hill down by the river Longevity, staying power, stamina. These are ends worth pursuing. These are valuable ends. They are intrinsically valuable. We need not be convinced or argued into the position that these are valuable things. Do we? Do we, DJ? Do we, Wallace? No, we understand intrinsically that we want to have longevity, staying power, stamina. We want to stay for the long haul. Many sayings, tropes, bromides, cliches refer to this particular value of longevity. However, it is very rare, ladies and gentlemen, it is very rare. There is a turnover rate of 14 companies in the Fortune 500 companies every year. What does that mean? That means that every year, 14 companies fall out of the fortune 500 list these are the biggest companies in the world man like also what do you think is the average lifespan and this is the average now okay that means a lot of companies are way less and some of them are skewing the number larger but it's about 40 years from inception of a company these are the largest companies we're talking about okay remember companies like pacific bell and things like that they no longer exist at some time you remember Kodak? Anybody remember Kodak? At some point, they had the entire photography and film development game sewn up. Blockbuster, Toys R Us. We know the stories. We know the stories. Longevity is an intrinsic value. It is something that the individual seeks for, the group seeks for, the families, the society, the species as a whole. The entire ecosystem is a battle for longevity. So what are the virtues that are required for the cultivation of this value, the attainment of this value, this thing that we find intrinsically valuable? How do we go about getting it? What are some of the tips? And today we're going to just touch the tip, if you will, of the iceberg regarding the five tips, as I call it, five tips for 
having staying power. Shout out to DJ King James for the $10 super chat. Welcome, welcome, welcome one and all. My name is Aiko Gammon and over here, my channel, we talk about being better and doing better, okay? Being better and doing better with a strong emphasis on doing. And what are we doing today? We're talking about staying power. We're giving you tips that are actionable, measurable, intuitive, and simple. Simplicity is the key here. Simple, actionable, measurable, and intuitive. And let me go ahead and give a round of applause to DJ for his contribution, okay? All of you can do likewise, and then we'll get right into this topic, okay? Let me, first of all, first and foremost, see what's going on in the chat. Let's see what's going on in the chat. We have Gary throwing in, throwing into the hat as well. Thank you very much, Gary. You too get a round of applause, Gary. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? How's everybody doing today? Today is Thursday, I believe. And uh, it is a beautiful Thursday out here in the Bay Area of Northern California. Devil's Bane, how you doing, sir? Devil's Bane, salute to you. Blind guy, his wife, their life. How are you doing? Okay. Money in the ghetto. Wallace, 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 Wallace. Riley, welcome, Riley. Okay, okay, okay. And we have black curls. I believe we got black curls in the house. Always nice to see you, ladies and gentlemen. Let us go ahead and get directly into this topic. Let us go and get directly into this topic here. How do we have staying power? How do we do it? How do we do it? Okay. Perhaps to begin, let's talk about the, um, the ways in which we fall, the ways in which we fall off, right? The things that make it such that we don't have staying power. Does that make sense, Wallace? I mean, if we're going to talk about how one has staying power, boil it down to five simple tips and so on and so forth. How about what knocks us off? Okay, what limits the staying power, the longevity, the stamina? How come there is a 14 company turnover in the Fortune 500 company year after year after year. And if you go back far enough, the companies in the Fortune 500 completely turns over. We look at individual companies, individual neighborhoods that were booming, the downtown metropolitan area with all the booming companies and the booming restaurants and the clubs and so on and so forth, whatever they might be. And they tend not to last very long, okay? Things fall apart. Entropy is the law of the universe. How do we fight against this, though? And how, in our human affairs, does it come about that we have limited staying power, okay? These are the principles that are going to guide the ways in which we try to fight against the limiting of our staying power, okay? So simple enough. Basically, too efficient is number one. Too efficient, and we will describe this when we start looking at the methodologies or the ways, the virtues, that is, the tips and the principles that lie behind the tips of how we have staying power. But being too efficient will kill you. Too efficient and therefore fragile. Think about it as over-specialization, if you will. Okay, Not embracing the chaos and the change. Not embracing the chaos and the change. Building a rigid battleship, a stiff battleship, and depending on that to resist the waves, rather than building something that's malleable and flows. And maybe sometimes you sink under the water, but you will pop up again, okay? That is the idea of being able to go with the whoops and the wharf, the ebbs and the flows, the boom and the bus cycles, building yourself such that you take advantage of the boom and the bus cycles, right? Volatility, Taking advantage of volatility rather than looking for stability. Stability will kill you. Efficiency will kill you. It makes you fragile, ladies and gentlemen. So, lacking internal coherence and fortitude, that part I think makes perfect sense. We need not elaborate upon that in terms of just laying out of the landscape with regards to the things that keep us from having staying power. Okay? And then reputational violence could happen, right? Someone could attack you. You could get canceled. Let me get a one in the chat if we understand how reputational violence, especially in this era of social media, can be 
a way in which longevity gets pulled right from underneath us. The rug of longevity, the rug, the rug of staying power, the, the rug of stamina. You can destroy your brand, destroy your reputation. This is another way in which it happens, okay? And then no follow through. That needs no elaboration. So we're talking about efficiency, which leads to fragility. We're talking about not embracing the chaos. We're talking about reputational violence as well. These are the kinds of things, writ large, generally speaking, if you will, that lead in our human affairs, our affairs as individuals, our affairs as families, our affairs as communities, businesses, large corporations even, societies even, entire civilizations. These same principles apply when it comes to why they did not last, okay? So we will get right into it by just first of all enumerating the five tips, the five virtues, the five road signs, if you will, which are also listed in the description of this video. Number one, strengthen your body, okay? Be versatile, create a team, a system, an institution, okay? Individuals innovate, individuals change, individuals invent. If you want change, it's done at the individual level. If you want something to last, you do it at the institutional level. Does that make sense? Systems, institutions, teams, these are the things that make things last. If you want to put it in a different way, you call it traditions, rules, culture, those impersonal forces. Impersonal forces make things such that they last. Personal forces depend too much on the individual. Okay? So, control your narrative. And obviously, these are questions of trade-offs, like looking at point number three, right? You do need the individual, otherwise change will not be made. But you also need the institution, otherwise that change you made will not be lasting. Can I get a one in the chat? For that particular point, this is a point that is very important, along with the whole efficiency point. This is another point that is very important. The juxtaposition, the trade-off between creativity, individuality, turning over things, you know, remaking of things, the invention of things, the breaking of molds, and then on the other hand, the need for the mold. On the one hand, you want to escape the matrix, but trust me, you need to create a new matrix. If you do not create a new matrix, whatever you achieved in terms of breaking out of the old matrix will not last, okay? It will become just pure chaos. And there is a trade-off, okay? You cannot have something lasting unless you embrace a little bit of institutionalism, a little bit of teams, systems, matrix, ladies and gentlemen. You cannot escape it. Life is about trade-offs. There are no perfect solutions. There are only trade-offs, ladies and gentlemen. So these are some of the basic rules that we're looking at here. Look to the future in times of stress. We'll describe all of this. We'll keep it concise. We will keep it clear. We will keep it, again, as we usually do over here, simple, measurable, actionable, intuitive. Okay? So let's get right into it. Number one, number one is something that I... I kind of went back and forth on including this in the list because number one, it's a given, right? It makes perfect sense. One need not mention this thing, but it is important because we as human beings tend to forget that we are a body. Notice that I did not say that we have a body. Did you hear me? <laughs> did you hear me, Wallace? You heard me, Julius? I didn't say we have a body. We are a body. To the, to the extent, especially, that we're talking about human ends in this world, not your reward in heaven or whatever spiritual concerns you may have. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the reason why Kodak failed, the reason why you will not have staying power, and you're doing things in this world. You need to understand that you are a body, and you cannot ignore that fact. So strengthen your body is the number one thing, and we will quickly just go over it. Very quickly go over it. Longevity is attained day at a time. Longevity is attained one day at a time. So, it is not a question of having 
far-sighted. It's not a question only of having a far-sighted point of view whereby you can plan ahead of the future and you can foresee all the possible roadblocks. That's not what keeps you there, okay? Because you have to deal with the roadblock one day at a time. And in order to deal with the roadblock one day at a time, the car has to be able to turn, to swerve, to perhaps go directly head on and break through the roadblock. Therefore, the transmission, the hydration of the car, the lubrication system of the car, the fuel, right? The chassis, the strength of the car needs to actually be intact today. It is not a question of the foresight of the car, the intelligence of the car, the ability of the car to forecast and see every possible obstacle. If it cannot indeed roll over the obstacle, there is no point. So the car needs to be in tip top shape. This point cannot be overemphasized. It hides in plain sight. Okay, this is one of those things that just hides in plain sight. Like many other cliches. Shout out to Dr. Thunder in the house, the honorable chat whip the honorable chat whip in the house says the problem with the matrix in the movie was that it was wrong it's not because it was a matrix hmm 100 yes systems are needed shout out to nicer in the house a systems are needed and by the way nicer drop the regular links you know drop the link to the Spotify, the Amazon. If you want to check out my music, ladies and gentlemen, please support. Please support local music, ladies and gentlemen. If you like the tunes that you hear, you can get an album that's already released, and I'll be releasing another one soon. But to Dr. Thunder's point, the point is this. You need a system for things to last, okay? You can't just come and say, okay, I am Moses. I've brought down something from the mountaintop. But if you don't have a system, a tradition, Something that says, let's call it Judaism, for example. It will not persist through time. So the problem is not the system. The problem is a corrupt system. And also, systems tend to get corrupt. Hence, they need new blood infused, new individual innovation infused in order to make sure that they stay fresh, in order to make sure that they do not calcify and so on and so forth. So good point there, Dr. Thunder. Thank you very much for your $5 super chat, ladies and gentlemen. So longevity is attained one day at a time. That's why that vehicle needs to be good today. It is not a question of your mind or some kind of abstraction or something like that. No, you need to go down there and ride that bicycle. All of us, okay, run, play tennis, do whatever it is you need to do, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to my man, Okechuku okay, Umera in the house. Now, let us see. Let us see here. You cannot work long hours, okay? <laughs> when you're out of shape, you don't have mental stamina and fortitude when you're out of shape. Again, you are a body. Yes, you are a body. Insofar as we're talking about things here, we could talk about the soul, the personality. We could talk about the spirit, which is fundamental, but okay, you can spiritualize things all you want. Okay. You can, you can spiritualize things all you want. It's not going to put gas in the car. It's not going to make sure that the tires are nice and flowing and filled with air. It's not going to make sure that the transmission works well. No, those are bodily things. And again, one day at a time is how you go through longevity. It's one day at a time. You don't leap. You don't leap into some spiritual plane and then just come out 20 years from now. Oh, I made it. I made it 20 years. Longevity. No, one day at a time, just like with the rest of us, okay? One day at a time. So exercise helps to regulate stress as well. We all know this. We all know this. Exercise helps us to regulate stress, right? And stress will happen. So when we talk about longevity and so on and so forth, this assumes, does it not, Dr. Thunder? Does it not assume, devil's bane, that we're doing something worthwhile, that we're doing something difficult, that we're building something of value? I'm not talking about longevity in sitting around with popcorn and watching Game of Thrones, okay? I don't care about that kind of longevity. That kind of longevity is not even worthwhile. And who gives a crap about that kind of stuff anyways? Come on, 
right? No, we're doing things that are difficult. Therefore, there's going to be trouble. There's going to be stress. There's going to be competition. There's going to be entropy. There's going to be challenges, right? Hence, if you don't have that ability to dissipate, remove the stress from your life, you're going to crumble. You are going to crumble, ladies and gentlemen. So, Here's another little trick. Remember, you are a body. Your IQ is a bodily function. You can look up the studies. You know, maybe somebody can look up the studies and drop it right now. The relationship between exercise and maintaining your IQ. Unfortunately, as we get older, while we, we get better at certain things, we consolidate certain kinds of knowledge and routinize certain kinds of systems, our IQ, however, starts to decline. However, one of the main ways in which we can forestall, keep back, you know, keep the decline at bay, if you will, is through exercise. There is no way around it, ladies and gentlemen. So, hence point number one. Again, I said that I hesitated to put in this point because it is, it goes without saying, right? There's no particular great insights that I just mentioned, other than the fact to remind people that they are indeed a body, Okay insofar as they're doing something here, they cannot ignore that fact. And while, yes, there is the soul and the spirit. Yes, 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 yes. But that does not gas up your car, ladies and gentlemen. You mess up your car and all that kind of stuff, and you want to spiritualize everything and mess up your body and sit there eating popcorn, drinking beer. You're not going to do anything worthwhile. Trust me, it's not going to last. Okay? So, be versatile. Be versatile. Now, one of the things that we mentioned that keeps people from lasting, keep companies from lasting, keep societies from lasting, is the fact that they focus too much on one thing, okay? They focus too much on one thing. So you need to build redundancies into your system. What do I mean by that? So, nicer. A stool with three legs can stand, right? Nice bar stool. It's got three legs. It's good right? It's done. You can say, hey, I'm done. I got three legs. I got my job. I got my 401k and I have a house. Ding, 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 ding. Typical. Okay. Yes. I got the American dream, lifestyle, everything. Check, check, check. I got the three legs in my stool. I am standing up. Anything else will be redundant. Why do I need seven legs in my stool? But then coronavirus comes through, knocks out one leg. And then what happens? What happens? What happens, Wallace? What happens, Dr. Thunder? What happens, nicer, to that stool? And the guy that you looked at across the street that also has his notary public business and also, you know, you guys both work as electricians, okay? But this your neighbor guy, he hustles in the weekends. He has clients in the residential space where he does residential kind of electrician work he operates under his own private license you guys work for this biggest electrician company one of the big electrician companies in the bay area let's say cupertino electric let's say in cupertino california you guys work on big projects like google and apple and you're doing fine your neighbor you're like I can't do all that weekend stuff that he does. He has these extra trucks and he hires these people and he goes out on weekends and he works extra and so on and so forth. Okay. He has seven legs on his stool. I don't need seven legs. I got three. I'm perfect. I'm efficient. I can chill. Right. This is the mindset that certain people get into. This is the mindset that certain businesses get into. This is the mindset that certain families, certain societies in general learn something about creatures learn something about the ecosystem and adaptation we have many redundancies in our systems don't we we have two lungs and two kidneys and we have two of many things right we have an extra well why it just makes sense though <laughs> it makes sense because s happens ish happens and hey at least chances are you may come out the other end with one thing still intact. So when we look at complex systems such as the ecosystem and those organisms which are there and their design, if you will, 
what works in this real life, real space, if you will, we see all the lessons there, okay? So you need to build redundancies into the system. So you need to trade off some efficiency for antifragility. What do I mean? The most efficient stool is a three-legged stool. Can I get a one in the chat if you understand that point, okay? Efficiency has to do with getting bang for your buck. You have a certain amount of wood, so you make a three-legged stool. You get the most bang for your buck, right? The most bang for your wood, if you will. You get the most bang for your buck by building that three-legged stool. No need for, yeah, you're like, I can build more three-legged stools. It is more efficient. I can just do this one particular task. I can be laser focused on this one particular skill, this one particular business. I can just focus on that thing. I can develop, develop, develop that way. And then that way I'm using my energy in the most efficient way. Look, life is not about perfect solutions. It's about trade-offs. That famous quote by Thomas Sowell. So what does that mean? The reason I put this here is to make sure that you understand that Trade-offs is the name of the game. So I'm not saying that when you build redundancy, you're also going to be maximally efficient. No, you can't be maximally stable and also stable across time, that is. You can't have maximum longevity and also maximum efficiency. It doesn't work that way. So when you decide, you know what? I don't get the most bang for my buck with five legs, but the five-legged stool will be around way longer than the three-legged stool. That's the point. The three-legged stool is great for today, but the five-legged stool will last longer. Hence, you need to have a system in your life of three-legged stools and five-legged stools, or start with three-legged stools, maximize your potential. Let's say you are going to focus laser sharp in this electrician work that you do, right? You're gonna focus on working on Cupertino Electric and rising up so that you get enough capital, build enough of a network so that you can then use that particular three-legged stool and its maximal efficiency and the results that you get from it to go ahead and then start your own side hustle in this landscape of business that we're using as an example. Start your own side hustle so that you can start adding legs. Don't just think that, oh, Cupertino Electric is going great. I am the general superintendent of the whole Western Hemisphere or whatever it is you are. Everything is excellent. Like, no, 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 no. Better go start finding extra legs and you reduce inefficiency. Let's say you were at 90% efficiency before, you may drop down to 85% efficiency. Okay, that's a 5% loss of efficiency. Maybe you go down to 80% efficiency, but you will be here 20 years from now. That's the point, okay? so. Sacrifice some efficiency, okay? And the point of anti-fragility, can I get a one in the chat if people have heard this word before, anti-fragility, if we understand what anti-fragile means or if we are familiar with the concept? It's something that was popularized, if you will, by, or introduced, I would say, by Nassim Nicholas Taleb in his books, The Black Swan, and another book called Anti-Fragility, right? But basically, anti-fragility is the concept that on the one hand, you have things that are robust, right? Like a rock. A rock does just fine whether you shake it or you don't shake it. In other words, you put a rock in a box to ship the box, to ship the rock. You don't have to say it's fragile and you don't have to say it's anti-fragile. On the other end of the spectrum, let's say rock is one. At negative one or let's say, in other words, Oops, let me put it this way. Rock is zero, okay? Rock doesn't care what happens, okay? Fragile is negative one. When you put it in a box, a champagne flute, you say, don't shake the box, don't shake the box. But there is something else, which we are, by the way. We are not a champagne glass or a rock. We are something that when you put it in the box, you say, shake the box. Please shake the box. If you do not shake the box, the thing will die. If you do not stretch, if you do not push your bones, your muscles, your immune system, your brain cells, your networks, your relationships, they die. If you put it in a box and you don't shake it, it dies. That's what anti-fragile is, okay? We have fragility, which is the champagne glass. You put it in there, you put the little champagne glass sign, you say, don't shake, okay? This is fragile, don't shake it. And then you have robust, which is just zero. It doesn't care. You can shake it or you cannot shake it. We are not robust. Neither are we fragile, we are anti-fragile, meaning if you don't shake us, we die, okay? 
We die, we die, we die, we die. Only paper beats rock. Isn't that right, Nicer? Only paper beats rock. <laughs> Become comfortable with the boom and bust cycles, okay? This is number two, be versatile. Versatility is huge in terms of what keeps you here next year and the year after that. Point being, look, that neighbor of yours that you're saying, oh, this person is not very efficient and so on and so forth. When the corona virus hits and boom, you lose your job or your hours get cut or whatever. And boom, conversely, at the same time, because things tend to be non-correlated. Okay, maybe there's an inverse correlation between commercial electrician business and residential electrician business. Your buddy has his foot on both in both. So when the hours get cut, when the salary, when, when you get furloughed, right? Your neighbor, his business starts booming. Commercial, I mean, sorry, residential electrician work goes up. Why? Why does it go up, Felicia? Why? Because people are home during Corona. People are buying Pelotons and they're buying uh, solar, uh, they're doing solar uh, panels in their house. They're buying Tesla batteries, okay? This is true, as a matter of fact. Certain goods, in terms of household goods, went all the way up. People are buying new ovens and all kinds of surround sound systems and so on and so forth. They need new wiring, okay? So while the commercial spaces, right, the commercial spaces, the office drained out, hence commercial electrician work drained out, your buddy who has been doing residential stuff on the weekends in his own private capacity and you thought, ah, this is so inefficient, right? Uh, why I don't want to do all that. Boom. Now he's here. He's booming. He's more successful than ever while you are feeling the negative effects. So your buddy has set himself up such that he can take advantage of the boom and bust cycles. Okay. Chaos can be more stable in the long run is what I'm telling you. What do I mean by that? If you take two people, okay, let's take two other people. Okay. One of them is a commercial banker and the other is a taxi cab company operator. He runs taxi cabs, he runs limousines, party buses, those kinds of things, okay? So one of them is an entrepreneur. He goes through the cycle, ups and downs, ups and downs, right? So they both net $300,000 a year, okay? Investment banker, $300,000 a year. Taxi cab company operator, $300,000 a year. The investment banker, his salary though is stable, it's like, straight line just one straight line just gets paid every month every month every month straight line boom always gets his three hundred thousand. this other guy chaotic volatile okay because he needs to go from ski season where he's sending people you know he has his you know uh party buses or whatever taking people to you know who, wherever point being summer comes around right the places that people want to go. Maybe he has to send his taxi cabs. He brings out his taxi cabs. He brushes them up, send them to the airport. People are doing travel, okay? In other parts or in other times, business is slow. There are different ways that this guy is riding, okay? Again, they're both earning 300000 a year. One of them goes up and down like this violently, and the other one is stable. A lot of times, people think, right? And let me get a one in the chat if this is clear. A lot of times people think that the stable guy has more longevity. Like the state, you think, oh, that's stable, right? But chaos, okay? The person who knows how to ride chaos is actually more stable because not just only is he able to take advantage of the volatility, okay? And possibly take advantage of some freak thing that happens in life, some opportunity that comes you know, because he's riding these different planes, but also he has inbuilt in him the ability to save, the ability to adjust. He is versatile. He can move. Oh, this thing is going wrong over here. Boom, hibernate over here. I'm going to hibernate my limos and I'm going to activate my party buses. I'm going to hibernate my taxi cabs and I'm going to activate this new app I'm trying to build in Zimbabwe where I'm going to try to be the new Uber of Zimbabwe or whatever. That is the idea. Again, be versatile. Efficiency will kill you. So 
how does one again i want to i want to say something about this now because you need efficiency and i mentioned it earlier that you want to be laser focused and be very efficient in one thing but only so that you can immediately use the earnings the results from that one thing to start another thing so what do i mean by that if we go back to the electrician i'm just going to reiterate something i said earlier okay you get a skill hard you know hard skill white collar or blue collar get that skill get a job get a certification okay or advance in that job be good at that thing right this is efficiency land now okay three-legged stool you're borrowing down you're going deep 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 and then the earnings that you get from that you immediately turn around and get your own side hustle side certification but guess what keep it within the same realm of your skills but perhaps in an adjacent market that's why for example that guy did residential as his side hustle and he has commercial work okay as his main job and then when corona hits the residential offices drain out the work is not flowing Com uh, i mean sorry the commercial offices drain out residential work booms point being he are using both the factors of efficiency or focus if you will getting the most bang for your buck using that also to take advantage of the chaos the market let me put it this way whether you where it's uh you, you're investing in the stock market or whatever it may be you need to have at least one foot in the land of chaos you need to have at least one foot in the land of volatility you need to have one foot in the land whereby you're pushing your skills pushing your networks and this is not only applicable ladies and gentlemen to the world of commerce which it might seem like that's the only case the world of commerce though is very important okay and over here we know we're talking primarily the men men need to get their work done and uh, they need to get their s together right so However, in all kinds of aspects, you need to be pushing your skills. You need to go and be like, okay, I'm very good at this particular one thing, but I tend not to read these other kinds of books. Or maybe I don't read as much. Let me force myself to start reading. Let me force myself to learn public speaking. Go to Toastmasters, that kind of a thing. Your networks. I only hang around with Korean Christians. Well, how about if I go hang, around, hang out with uh, black Baptists instead? Expand my network. Because this idea of efficiency, narrow focus will kill you in the long run. So that is that for number two. And then we have number three. Remember, we're talking about having staying power. Staying power is something that we find valuable intrinsically. We seek after it. We want to align ourselves such that we're here tomorrow, such that our family stays here, such that the species stays here at the highest level but it is rare, okay? Kodak disappeared, why? Because it wasn't versatile, right? Kodak actually invented, do you know, I'm sure you guys know, Kodak invented digital photography, right? <laughs> do you know Kodak actually invented digital photography? They could have had the game sewn up. Kodak could have been like the Instagram or something like that. Kodak invented digital photography but rather than market it, they were like, we make so much money in film and film development. Let's just stay there. It's efficient. I can picture the boardroom right now. We're like, we have the film game sewn up. We are very efficient with this. We have the economies of scale. We have the networks. We have the supply chain of film. Why do we want to go into this chaotic new thing? Why do we want to do something new? Blah, 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 blah. Okay. And then boom, they sink. That's what tends to happen. Don't fall for that. Don't fall for that. Same thing happens with Blockbuster or Toys R Us. We see it over and over again. Okay. So you want to create a team, a system, an institution, because as an entrepreneur, for example, or as someone who is uh, innovative, someone who creates, someone who overturns and breaks no uh, molds and breaks matrices. We understand the importance of doing that. We understand the importance of going from zero to one. We understand the importance of having nothing and then creating something or having a old system that's corrupt and atrophied and no longer serves the needs of its original raison d'etre or whatever. The, the original need of the institution. We understand the need of breaking it up, but things will not last unless you have a system. 
Individuals create, change, invent, but systems maintain. Okay? Systems need to be foolproof. Okay? You start a business. You know. Okay? Okay. So, and the other thing again about that, that efficiency thing, the efficiency thing is so important. Okay? What I mean, that, that versatility thing, if you focus on one particular, want to take away one particular thing out of this that kind of cuts across all the other aspects, number two is it, versatility. Okay? Versatility. You can be like, hey, I'm an engineering company. I'm, I, have, I have an engineering company. I'm the CEO of Prometheus Engineering. I, I specialize in seismic bracing and I focus on these kinds of clients. I'm very good with these kinds of clients and so on and so forth. But over the years, okay, started this company in 2014. But over the years, I have seen the drastic changes in terms of where the revenue of the company comes from. If I focused on the propane industry as I used to before, you know, big propane tank manufacturers and their ilk, or if I just focus on the industrial sector doing in structural engineering for them, I would be completely at the mercy of the cycles of that particular business. Hence, you have to force yourself to do some, you know, residential buildings, for example. I'm going to do some residential buildings as well, just in case, okay? And I'm going to try to work for other kinds of clients. Maybe I'm going to try to get a foot into the petrochemical industry just in case. And right now I'm actually developing a staffing agency for government institutions in the construction or government agencies in the construction area. Okay. California State Department of Transportation, for example. Okay. They can pay you $300,000 a year and you can hire somebody, pay them $80,000 a year and you keep the rest. What do I mean by that? You set up these different avenues or revenue streams because you never quite know, okay? Again, number two, number two, I'm harkening number two, but let's go back to number three now, okay? Saying create systems and so on and so forth. You start this business. This business is dependent on you. It's heavily dependent on you. You are a superstar. You're the rock star. You know your stuff. You can sell, sell, sell. You can execute. You got engineering down your A, right? But you only have so far to grow. You only have 24 hours in a day. And there are only so many duplicates of you out there. And they may not want to partner with you. Let's say I'm like, hey, you know what? Let me try to find some other Ike to bring into the company, right? So that we can grow together. Well, chances are the other Ike is doing his own thing. Does that make sense? Let me get a one in the chat if this makes sense. A lot of times the entrepreneurial creative types, they tend to think, okay, I'm going to just, I'm good at riding chaos. Okay. And when I want to expand, I'm going to find some other genius chaos rider and we can expand together. Well, number one, these people are rare. Number two, that other genius chaos rider, he's riding his own waves over there. So you want a system. This is something that people like me are not good at. So you bring in systems builders. These are your accountants, lawyers, engineer types, your managers. They build in systems. They build in a set of checklists. They make things foolproof so that you can hire any idiot, if you will. Any idiot now can come in and say, okay, this is the process in Prometheus Engineering for doing seismic bracing in a, in a nuclear power plant, right? First, you check this, and then you look at this map. You get the seismic parameters here. You check it against this particular code requirement. Step number two. You do this, 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 and this. Step number three, you do this, 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 and that. Full proof. I, or the kind of uh, the, the individual, the, the, the creator, the changer, the inventor type, does not do that. They're like, ah, I just, uh, I don't want to, I want to build a system. I don't like checklists. I don't like spreadsheets. Uh, ooh, come on, I just want to do it, right? However, you're going to need to dial yourself back. Take a deep breath. Relax and create a foolproof system. It's not gonna be as efficient in terms of speed and so on and so forth as you are because people are gonna need to check lists and so on and so forth, but it lasts. The big thing you're gonna see is this dichotomy or shall we say juxtaposition or shall we say trade-off. There's a trade-off between efficiency and longevity, efficiency and stability. Remember the stool example, three-legged stool is the most efficient. You get the most bang for your buck, but one leg goes out and you're done. So that's the idea here. Same idea, ancillarily, tangentially applies. So a system, foolproof, okay? 
So it does not depend on the individual to succeed. And I just wanted to mention here that systems are not responsive to change. In other words, in all my presentations, as you know, if you're, if you're not new to the channel, I like to talk about the trade-offs because I'm not just gonna be like, hey, here are five tips for longevity and not have you understand that things are not simple, simply one-dimensional. Like, oh, if I just did these five things then everything will be okay. No, 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 no. You trade off. There's no free lunch. When you're going towards the direction of longevity, you're going to lose some efficiency. And you need to know that. And you need to be okay with that. When you want to build the systems, for example, I recently hired three engineers. Okay. I, this is the first time that I'm going outside the country to hire people. Hence, I have to build systems because they're not in the office with me, that kind of a thing. Right. I need to be a little less efficient. I need to stop and train them. I need to stop and think and break down into two dimensional, simple steps, perhaps even one dimensional, simple steps, the things that I just kind of know, right? I need to be able to do that because once I'm able to build that thing out, then they can take over and then they can ride. They can make the machine turn, right? They can make the machine turn. However, you need to understand that systems are not responsive. Okay. Systems are not responsive to change and they can become corrupt. They can atrophy, right? Any kind of system, a national system, a company, you know, Genghis Khan comes through, he conquers, right? He's versatile. He can move, he can, he can make deals and so on and so forth. Third generation in what tends to happen? What tends to happen? What tends to happen? Things calcify, you know, hence you need that fresh infusion of the individual. Remember the first point in this point number three here, individuals create, change, invent, but systems maintain. If you want, you know, the African proverb, right? You want to go fast, <laughs> go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. You want to go fast and not have to worry about the NPCs, not have to worry about the checklists that you have to tell people, not have to worry about rules, right? Go alone, but you won't go very far. Hence, you need to maybe dial it back at some point and be like, okay, cool. I need to bring people in my team. I need to create foolproof systems so that I can go together. And this, again, it's not just in the commercial space or in the space of business or money. These things apply everywhere, okay? You want to have a team, an institution, okay? Right? In other words, after Jesus left, you need a Paul, right? A Paul to come in and deal with the brass tacks, the organization, the politics, how do I bring the Jews together with the Gentiles? How do I, um, you know, make sure that the zealots over here and the Essenes and the Pharisees are all coming together? How do I make sure that oh, I'm telling, you know, the Jewish law that, hey, you know what? It's not about the law. You know, we can allow these uncircumcised heathen to join in and so on and so forth. Let's build a coalition, coalition building, that kind of a thing. Otherwise, whatever Jesus came here to say will not be institutionalized and then will not last. And then the warning, right? Institutions can get corrupt. Okay. We're not going to get into a philosophical conversation, but I think that it is important to note that everything is about trade-offs. Okay. So control your narrative. That's number four. Okay. Number four, control your narrative. And yeah, just like Dr. Thunder says, get the likes up. Get the likes of people. Remember when we talked about the ways in which our longevity is limited? We talked about reputational violence, did we not? Let me go back to that particular slide, just so for those who came in late. We started out by saying, well, <clears throat> let's look at the, you know, some of the simple ways in which our staying power is limited. Okay. Too efficient, too focused, no redundancy. We're, we're laser sharp, lean, mean machine. Boom, we're fragile, right? That's the trade-off in that area there. Not embracing chaos, thinking, hey, I'll just keep this job, right? I'm a or an investment banker. 
I get my $300,000 a year. I'm good. My buddy, the guy who runs the taxi cab company, he's always going up and down, boom and bust, whatever, but your buddy will be around a lot longer when you're gone, when your investment banker job is gone or whatever, because trust me, okay, look at this. What I'm, The point is that that investment banker's salary is zero, is one or zero. You know what I mean? It's either all the way up or it's zero. But the guy who has the company that has to fur, you know, has to move from one thing to the other, not only is it developing the habits as we talked about before, but his money goes in waves. It never goes to zero, right? He is able to gather hay while the sun shines. He knows that summertime in, you know, Hawaii or wherever he's operating, he gets a lot of taxi business in the airport so he gathers he stacks up stuff in his storehouse during that time and then when winter comes he goes and he hibernates that kind of a thing so when you see graphs that go up and down like this they tend to actually last longer than steady state graphs because those are go they will go they will go for a while and then beep you lose your job and then it's zero right so we also then point of me going back to this slide is to talk about reputational violence and now we're going to talk about how we take care of the reputational violence because that is one area in which we can get destroyed out here by these cave dwelling minotaurs shout out to sebastian richie sebastian richie in the house always good to see you sir a a is that a or a a a <laughs> yes 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 that is a canadian joke a a so shout out to one and all in the house <laughs> cj rich good one ha 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 we got snuggles in the house. We got snuggles in the house. And we're going to give a round of applause to you, Sebastian, Richie, everyone else who has donated so far to make sure that we have staying power over here. Okay. And again, there is a Patreon and we do have things coming up. We will be setting up a Discord server. We will be having the ability for you to dictate the direction of the show in terms of a monthly ask me anything. You know, you ask questions and then I come through, I answer the questions in a show, right? Also, consultations, right? I know a thing or two by, about a thing or two, if I may say it myself, okay? I know a thing or two about a thing or two, and I can help you in many, many areas. People reach out to me for that already, okay? We're just going to have a way of systematizing it, formalizing it. Go to the Patreon, drop in $5, $10, or whatever, in the hat, a month, and we'll get this ball rolling and we'll make sure that we all get there to the promised land. I have seen. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Relax, Ike. Relax. <laughs> so. Going back to item number four. How do we have staying power against the reputational violence, okay? Let's get into this one. Let's get into this one. Build allies organically. Do you know what I mean by this? It goes also with the whole thing about stability. Castles built with sand. Allies built on sand are allies that you build by slapping their back. Isn't that right, Dr. Thunder? You take them out to lunch. You, uh, you wine and dine them. You talk a good game, okay? What's the problem with building allies in that manner? Can we think of problems with that? What I'm saying is not that it's a bad thing. What I mean is problems vis-a-vis -vis staying power. Why is it not advisable for the long term to build allies that way, okay? One thing is that you're not the only person that could slap backs and take people to lunch, okay? You're not the only person that could slap backs and take people to lunch. 
or dinners, wine and dine them, talk a good game, okay? You do it today, maybe it lasts three months, the next person comes over, they sweep the other person off their feet. They tell them something, they offer them more money, they offer them more incentives. In other words, it's not a lasting way of building it. Mm-hmm. You say meditation allowed you to avert reputational violence. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. By causing you to resist the urge to react. Indeed, 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 indeed. So let's talk about this organic way of building which tends to last longer. In other words, it takes longer, but you want your reputation to grow by word of mouth. Do you understand what I mean? You're not taking that person to lunch and dinner or you're not depending upon that. Take them to lunch, okay? Take them to dinner, okay? Slap their back and talk a good game, okay? That's fine. But the point is, you also want the organic word of mouth flow of your reputation to be in the air. How do you do that? Well, be competent. <laughs> Isn't that easy? Ethiopified? Isn't that easy? Very easy. Be competent. Always deliver. When this person gets called, they always deliver. Okay? I asked for suggestions when I was in Ethiopia, and Ethiopified gave me a very nice collated list of places to go. She delivered. Okay? So when it comes to, when somebody says, oh, next time, uh, does Ethiopified know anything about Addis Ababa and the outskirts of Addis Ababa? I'll say, yes, she knows it. Now, she has the reputation because she delivered in a competent way. And I went to the place, some of the places that she mentioned, and it worked out. Good stuff. So be competent. Always deliver. That way, people will know of you before you step in the room. It's like, oh, Ike is coming over. Oh, that's the engineer solution specialist, uh, C, oh, the president of, oh, from, oh, yeah. I've heard of him. When I was in Southern California, blah, 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 blah. I've had something recently happen where because of my reputation, I was able to dodge a big bullet. <laughs> this was something that happened from people in Liechtenstein, in Europe, okay? Some people that I do not know. But because I was able to do good business with certain people out here in the Bay Area, and there was one time when this particular guy came from Liechtenstein, okay, the place where the billionaires hide their money, it's a tax haven. <laughs> this guy came over from Liechtenstein, okay? We met in San Francisco. He had a great time. He also knows that I do good work. The, for the duration of the project, there was no problems, okay? The people whom he trusted as well vouched for me. Because of that, I was able to get some leeway vis-a-vis -vis certain contracts and certain things, which I almost missed because I was out and about in Ethiopia <laughs> uh, in the month of March. So because I was out and about in Ethiopia in the month of March, I, you know, certain things slipped through the cracks. But because of this reputation that I had by word of mouth, not because I was slapping the guy's back and doing all that kind of stuff, but because the people whom he knew and trusted said, you know what? Trust me, Ike will take care of this. You know, like there were, something came up like, oh, Ike hasn't delivered on this stuff. And the people whom he knew, this is over in Europe in Liechtenstein, right? I, I've never been to Liechtenstein. They were like, trust me, don't worry. Ike will take care of it. That in addition to the fact that he met me that one time, <clears throat> okay? He met me that one time in San Francisco and he knows how I roll. Was like, you know what? We'll cut Ike a break, okay? We'll give Ike the ability to come through in short time and make sure that he closes the gap and get this done. And then I came through right after, closed the gap, delivered. Whew. So you never know when these things will come through for you, okay? Be competent, always deliver, and deliver at many levels. Be easy to work with, use the seesaw leverage, okay? Be easy to work with. It, you, it, you cannot imagine how important that is. Different people are gonna work with you, whether they be clients, or they were to be the employees of clients. In other words, the accounting department, okay? Marcy, okay, in the accounting department of one of my clients, for example. I'm always pleasant to Marcy. 
I'm pleasant to the superintendent. I'm easy to work with with the project engineers and the project manager. I am I go above and beyond to the, for the president of the company, that kind of a thing of my clients. So at all levels, I am easy to work with. Therefore, because we know this happens, right? We know this happens. Marcy has the ear of the president of the company, okay? And the president of the company is trying to decide something. Should we change our engineering, you know, whatever, our engineering services or something like that? And he's looking at these names and it's like, who's this guy, uh, Prometheus Engineering? Who's Ike? And Marcy's like, oh, keep Ike, okay? Ike makes our billing simple. He always, you know, signs the purchase orders on time. He always sends his invoices to us in the way in which we say he should. Ike, all the superintendents in the work and the foreman at the job love Ike, that kind of a thing, right? So you never know whom has the ear. So just be competent and be easy to work with at all levels. Doesn't matter from the lowest to the highest, highest to the lowest, sideways, it doesn't matter. Always do that. Hence, and let me, let me, let me put it this way now. So you want to build this concentric circles, okay, at different levels, and then people will have faith in you. So what tends to happen? I already gave one example of this. So Ike went to Ethiopia and was having too much of a good time and some things fell through the cracks. Or Ike doesn't have this particular one certification in order to do things according to the letter of the law in this particular jurisdiction in some corner of Ohio, right? And Ike's hater comes through and he goes and he whispers in the president of uh, the contractor whom is Ike's client and says, well, you know, Ike doesn't have uh, Ike does not have that uh, that certification. You know, like why? You know, why are you gonna keep this guy? Marcy loves Ike. The superintendents love Ike. Ike makes their operations flow smoothly. Ike always comes through with the details, the drawings, the design calculations, and the answers every time. Ike argues for Ike is in their corner. Ike is in the passenger seat with them in the journey of their company. Do you think that the comp that that particular what is the president of the company gonna do? He's going to say, you know what? Leave me alone. I don't care whether he has that thing or not. As a matter of fact, it doesn't matter. I don't care that I cut this particular corner this time. It doesn't matter. Okay? <laughs> Let me get a one in the chat if that point is clear. People will attack you. People will try to assail you. Assail your reputation, that is. But if... People know you on a human level, and also if you make their lives easy, you make their work easy, they are not going to care. Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, people don't really care that much about, and I call it letters of the rules type stuff. Oh, well, Ike always breaks the rules because he sends in his thing and this, whatever. It's like, I don't care. I can break the rules all day. I just saved me $50,000 last week because he was able to send that particular thing to the authority having jurisdiction over the weekend. He sent something at midnight on Sunday, okay? And then we were able to have our concrete pour, saving me $50,000. Ike has done this many, many times at many different levels. I hear this about Ike from all, from my accounting department all the way to the foreman to everybody. I don't care that he, he doesn't follow that little letter of the rule or whatever. But if you don't have that, if you, have, if you didn't save him $50,000 yesterday and somebody comes, comes and say, hey, Ike hasn't checked these boxes. You're like, Ike, who's, anyway, yeah, like we don't want those people who don't check boxes. Get rid of him, off with his head, right? But when you save him $50,000, when you're easy to work with, when you're competent, when you always deliver, you can you can get away with a lot. <laughs> you can get away with a lot. So give people what they want, ladies and gentlemen, and then build your reputation. Basically, you want to be shameless, admit all mistakes, and explain and demonstrate growth. This one has to do with marketing and branding. What do I mean by that? Some people can get canceled very easily, but there are people like Joe Rogan who cannot get canceled. Does anybody... Joe Rogan, for example, is a good exemplar he typifies, he epitomizes. <laughs> I'm in love with words, by the way, just in case you haven't noticed. Joe Rogan is a very good example of this particular principle here of not being cancelable, 
because you already showed all your hands. Barack Obama also did something similar where he wrote a book long before he ran for president. What did he say in that book? He said he put all his dirt out. All the cocaine snorting and weed smoking and uh, snorting coke with Becky in Hawaii, all that stuff. Partying with Brad and Becky snorting coke. He put it all out there. Joe Rogan, all his stuff is out there. And also, people are able to relate with you on a, on a human level, okay? When people see you, you have a YouTube channel, you have some kind of a branding. In other words, again, remember what this says, item number four, control your narrative, right? You want to control your narrative. So, so someone cannot come in and say, you know, that Joe Rogan guy, you know, he does psychedelics and uh, he used to, uh, he, the, the fleshlight used to advertise in his hair. He, he's vulgar. He's just like, it's like, yeah, I know. And I still like him. Get, get the hell out of here, Okay. He has shown me his human side. He without sin cast the first stone and so on and so forth. You come out, you show people your human side. You put enough content out there so that people know who you are. You're able to put the content and show your mistakes, explain and demonstrate the growth, and people will forgive you. People want those kinds of people because they, they prefer those kinds of people. And as a result, they're less cancelable than the person who has this clean as a wind driven snow fresh image like oh this person is a uh, stiff they can break you that way but when you show the human side and you control your narrative that way then you are unassailable ladies and gentlemen that is the idea that is the idea a lot of people to connect with you on a human level so this is an important aspect of it this narrative branding image aspect of things and the two main things here, which is that you want to put things out there that make you human. And the other thing is you want to organically build a reputation because of your competence. And when you are competent and you deliver and you make people's lives easier, whether they be your clients or you, you know, whether it's a whatever kind of a transactional relationship you're having. OK, whether whether they're part of your network, you know, like Kevin Samuel says, you know, be useful to the group. OK, be useful to the group. When you're useful to the group, you can get away with a lot of things because hey, we're all human and then your reputation is unassailable. You cannot be canceled, so on and so forth. Okay, last point. Last point. Let's see. How are we doing on time here? And I believe, let me see what happened. Let me see what happened. Shout out, shout out, shout out, shout out, shout out to Questy Jackson, always dropping, always showing love in the Cash App. Thank you very much for the $10 Cash App. And also, Cichlid, Cichlid for the $10 Cash App. Much appreciation to you. A round of applause to you, fine gentlemen. So, item number five, five tips. Five tips, ladies and gentlemen, and this is item number five. Okay. In times of stress, which will come because this is about doing things that are worthwhile, you know, aligning your either individual integrity, not just for now, but for the future, not just for yourself, but for your family and then for your community and perhaps for the whole human race. Who knows when you do things that are worthwhile, whether it be in the business world or in any other kind of realm, there will be stress. Is that not right, Young Swift? There is stress involved in that. Look, almost every day, I mean, almost every day. I wake up and it's, uh, you know, stressful. I don't mean, you know, that it's unhappy or not. Like I would not give it, I would not change anything for, I wouldn't change anything, right? I would, I would live the same exact, no, no, no complaints whatsoever, you know, <laughs> but stress will happen. And what is the key thing that I do? This is something, as was mentioned earlier, the things that you learn from meditation, right? There's something called externalization and meditation, okay? If I were not to use a meditation example, if you've watched the movie uh, Major Pain or if you understand the idea of someone chops off your leg <laughs> and then you break your finger so you don't focus on the chopped off leg. Do you understand what I mean? N externalization is, let's say, you're feeling a lot of, you know, you, you feel pain, okay, literal pain. Rather than focus on your internal sensations, you immediately look outside you sharpen your ear, and that's why this is a meditation thing. It's about mastery of your subjective consciousness thing. It's about using your senses, right? So you listen externally. You look externally. You feel the breeze so that you're not feeling the pain inside. 
Does this make sense? We do this also with things like alcohol and I'm going to go distract myself with a movie. Does that make sense? Let me get a one in the chat if the concept of externalization uh, makes sense. There are healthy ways and unhealthy ways of doing it is my point. Okay, Unhealthy ways is to go watch a movie and drink beer with idiots talking nonsense. That's not healthy. Healthy ways is to use your own power of your consciousness to be able to focus outside, focus elsewhere. Now, with regards to getting things done, when stress comes around, when you're like, hey, I need to build this new aspect of my company, okay? I need to do the staffing agency aspect of my company, okay? Which is going to outsource staff to state departments of transportation to begin with so that I can augment their staff things are stressful okay number I, steps number two and steps number three are stressful what do you do what do you do young swift you start thinking about step number four you see the trick <laughs> look you have something to do you're, you're overwhelmed you're like oh my god i gotta i gotta do this and i gotta do that and i gotta like oh my god this meeting and this and this be like, and this is the this is the principle that a lot of people talk about, and I think it's it, it confuses a lot of people when they say like, if you're overwhelmed, add something else to your plate. What they mean is not, oh, I don't have time to do three things, so let me add a fourth thing. Not necessarily. It means you occupy your mind with something else that is in front of the things that are giving you stress. It is like a magic trick. It is like a magic trick. What did you do? You just mentally hopped over the problem. You're like, okay, step one, I need to do, fill out this form. Step two, I need to get this certification. Step three, I need to get the certification notarized and approved by this authority having jurisdiction over here. Step two and three are giving me a lot of problems. Step four is to find the staff, right? Find people to train them up. Step two and three are giving me problems. Rather than stay there, I'm like, okay, we're having problems. There are delays. There are problems right now. I'm going to start thinking about step four. I'm going to start thinking about the staff. I'm going to start just plotting about the staff stuff. Forget step two and three. Forget the fact that today is not going well in the relationship. Forget the fact that in this particular plan that I have, things are not going well. I'm going to just look at what's ahead. This is true of any endeavor, whether, again, it be your relationships, your networks, your business, your gym workout stuff. You're like, I feel like crap today, but I'm just going to look at uh, what I said I was going to do two months from now. So after I get my rock hard, hard abs back, how can, what are, let me start looking up video routines on how to do... Uh, how to get back in the kickboxing game or something. It's like, forget the fact that I'm cramping right now on my bicycle and I feel like dying, okay? No, I'm, I'm start thinking about how to do kickboxing two months from now. What does this do for you? And I think it makes sense. But basically, not focusing on the pain, right, so that it does not incapacitate you is the first aspect here, but it gives you the impetus to move past the particular difficulty you're having right now in the relationship, in your workout, in your business. Step two and three are difficult. Think about step four. And not only does it give you the impetus to move on, you already moved on. <laughs> Isn't that right, CJ? You already moved on. You're like, oh my God, oh my God, it's chaotic. I can't meet this. Da, 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 da. Okay, fine. Okay, cool. What's the next thing I was supposed to do after this again? Let's go back to the drawing board and look at that. How does that look? Um, okay, cool. So after this is done, in six months, I got to call this, that, and the other. Hmm, let me see. What's the, okay, I got to go to this website and do that, blah, 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 blah. You already moved on. You just move on past it. The stress is still there. The problem is still there. You still got to solve it. You're still delayed, but you're using the pain as fuel. Because trust me, you use anything you can. You use any crutch you can. What is the pain? What is the fuel here? You're trying to run away from the stress of today, but rather than run backwards, <laughs> you run forward. You're like, 
oh my god step two and three is so horrible maybe i shouldn't do this anymore maybe i should cower maybe i should go like no don't do that you're like oh oh step two and three you're gonna be okay step four let's look at step four let's open the books on step four what's the plan for step four what are we gonna do after this is over yeah this stressful thing that we're struggling with right now how to get these things right with the supply chain what are we doing after we get this supply chain fixed let's look at that what's the plan for that now you're using pain to propel you forward it's a it's a it's a jedi jutsu type stuff ladies and gentlemen so puts you in an optimistic mind frame obviously so these are my five points these are my five points they're easy five points they will give you staying power whether it's in a business in your workout in your relationships in your networks whatever it may be whatever it may be and recall what are the things that make it such that we do not have staying power what are the things that make it such that we do not have staying power these things have to do with hyper efficiency hyper focus right i'm only going to have a three-legged stool i'm going to get the best bang for my buck i'm only going to have this particular job and it pays this much and i have my 401k and my house and that's it oh that guy over there that does other things on the weekends too and he's trying to improve this skill and he goes to these networking things and he's always trying to add new things to his plate like eh whatever but trust me he the person who's doing more not as efficient but he will be here long term that's how you last that's how you don't end up being kodak or blockbuster so on and so forth okay also very valuable in relationships as well there's trouble going on right now you're depending on this one move, one thing, or whatever, add to it. Add to it. Look past the trouble. Okay? Get in a positive mind frame. Have a number of stool, or a number of legs on your stool. Don't just depend on the three-legged stool. Okay? So, real quick, real quick, we shall reiterate, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm doing better with time on these, okay? I'm trying to keep these short and sweet because I don't want to be overly verbose and I want to be more consistent in putting out the content out there, okay? When, uh, let's say, <laughs> I have different, so let me put it this way. There are two kinds of streams that go on here. During the weekdays, generally speaking, okay? I have more practical streams. Practical, pragmatic, pop, 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 pop. And then maybe on the weekends, more or less, weekends, more or less, it's not a strict rule, we have a stream like I did last time, okay? I'll bring Jay Ibrahim over or something. And then we just go off. We talk about ontology, metaphysics, and epistemology, and uh, the good life, uh, the nature of the good, the good as such, the good in itself, Platonism, this, that, and the other, okay? Still keeping it simple, measurable, actionable, and intuitive, okay? But we can go on and wax poetic for three hours, okay? Which is very necessary as well to have a well-rounded thing <laughs> yes 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 young swift says yo ike just said if your relationship is going south with your girl add another girl <laughs> ah, that is a good one so staying power longevity the ability to be in it for the long haul is something that we respect it is something that we we you know we we we, we like we respect that old money don't we <laughs> if we wanted to put it in such vulgar terms the old stuff the thing that has always been there the thing that is respectable and stayed the thing that has that patina on it the thing that has had time to be able to really get down and know itself in other words what i'm saying is longevity and staying power and stamina in many different perspectives is a value that we find intrinsically worthwhile. It is a pursuit, an end that we find intrinsically worthwhile, but it is not common at all. Every year, 14 companies fall out of the 14, Fortune 500. You go back far enough and the companies in the Fortune 500 are completely different, okay? And we know companies like Kodak and so on and so forth that just gone now, they disappeared. What happened to them? Entire civilizations this happens to. Okay? Or like 50 Cent said. What did 50 Cent say? <laughs> um, Young Swift. 
or you're going to be like, oh, I'm unplugged. I don't know who 50 Cent is. What did 50 Cent say that hinges upon this topic? I know, it's rather obscure. Damn, homie. In high school, you was the man, homie. What the F happened to you? Yes, yes. What the F happened to you? You were the man. You had it all. And then chaos came, which is the way of the universe. Entropy came, which is the way of the universe. Reputational violence came, and you were not fortified, okay? You were fragile because you only had a three-legged stool. You only had this one thing that you were good at. Yes, you were the man. And damn, homie. <laughs> Uh, uh. Ah, it, it, it law. Yes, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Let us see, let us see, let us see. We are going to go out. We're going to take ourselves out now with the run track. In the den of iniquity, vicinity no pretty, calamity fi hit we any moment, what a pity. Tomorrow never certain, what dwells behind the curtain, the face of evil smirking with their shifty eyes averting. It's not a steady bubble, could either pop or topple, many will fall and stumble, let the dozers gather rubble from a later Colorado, Guinea to Burkina Faso. You know what I'm saying? Peace, and we shall see you next time. In the den of iniquity, vicinity no pretty, calamity fi hit we any moment, what a pity. Tomorrow never certain, what was behind the curtain, the face of evil smirking with that shifty eyes averting. It's not a steady bubble, that either pop or topple, many will fall and stumble, let the dozers gather rubble. From a later Colorado, Guinea to Burkina Faso, cannon could reach the towers and the troops will storm the castle. He, I say, run, run, come, we we get it. Because the peace that is bestowed upon the meek is overrated So run, run, come, make me get it Falling all your data, and your sons, we can't forget it I say, run, run, come, make me get it Because the peace that is bestowed upon the meek is overrated Lord, run, run, come, make me get it Calling all your data, and your sons, we can't forget it With the rubble steady rising And hearts are compromising Conditions here are stifling Making evil appetizing The fists are steady forming And Tenants is falling, defenses are withdrawing, possibilities are falling. In these circumstances, evil will make advances. Pick up your sword and lances and be sure to take your stances. Victory is never promised. The battle is upon us. Gather the brave and honest and the righteous in your corners. Go. Run, 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 make we get in. Because the peace that is bestowed upon the meek is overrated. So run, run, come, make we get in. Falling out your daughter, son, your sons, we can't be getting. I say, run, run, come, make we get in. Because the peace that is bestowed upon the meek is overrated, Lord. Run, come, come, make we get in. Calling out your daughter, son, your sons, we can't be getting. So run, run, come, make we get it Calling out your daughter, son, your sons, we can't forget it I say, run, run, come, make we get it Because the peace that is bestowed upon the meek is overrated, Lord Run, come, come, make we get it Calling out your daughter, son, your sons, we can't forget it Calling on your daughters and your sons, they can't forget it. I 
I say, run, run, come make we get it. Because the peace that is bestowed upon the meek is overrated, Lord. Run, come, come make we get it. Calling out the darkness and the sons we come we get it. Run, run, come make we get it. Because the peace that is bestowed upon the meek is overrated. So run, run, come make we get it. Calling out your data, son, your sons, we can't forget it. Run, run, come make we get it. Because the peace that is bestowed upon the meek is overrated, love. Run, come, come make we get it. Calling out your data.